Peter uh, literally recounted uh, the experiences of his time with Jesus. Mark wrote it down, and this has become uh, the earliest recorded gospel uh, account of Jesus' life and ministry. And so here we pick up in chapter number eight of the book of Mark. Uh, we find the words of Jesus written in this wise. Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered, Jesus, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. Jesus asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you are the Messiah. In the uh, original languages, that word uh, translates to the anointed one. You are the Messiah, the anointed one. In the Greek, it just says Christ. And so literally, if you look at uh, different accounts, you may see it saying you are Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Jesus says uh, to Peter, sternly ordered him not to tell anyone about him. Jesus told him to keep a secret. Amen. I don't know if Jesus could could tell some of us that. Amen. Because our mouths, Lord, they be running. Verse number 31, and Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Verse number 32, Jesus said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Uh. Verse 34, and Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. May we all say thanks be to God. So we're going to speak from the title uh, today, Under the Influence. Under the Influence will be the first in this series called Truth and Dare, Under the Influence. Father, we want to say thank you, God. Thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We invite you to God, send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. May it rest on me and the hearers of your word. And God, as we uh, listen and are challenged, may we grow. And may we put into practice that which you have called to our mind and heart and spirit and soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of the way say amen, amen, and amen. Under the influence, one of the most uh, important truths that we are to reckon with is that none of us go through life without a set of catalysts, influences, or things that shape our sensibilities about the world or ourselves. I find it fascinating in this passage that Peter, one of the most passionate and faithful followers of Jesus, was at a most critical time in the life of Jesus' ministry under the influence, as Jesus said, not of divine things, but his mind was set on human things. And it gives me, and I hope all of us to know, that we, as we navigate through this season, must not take it for granted that our minds, our heart, dare I say, our will, are not under the influences of that which our antichrist, or dare I say, human things versus the divine will and purposes of God. I mean, what would it take for you and I to take some introspection and some reflection and some honest assessments about what influences us 
as we make our decisions or dare we as we walk through the daily tasks of our lives. I am troubled and taken aback by the many ways our subconscious and our unconscious are overly determined by sources and influences and ideas that are often invisible to us, yet they play themselves out in our behaviors, our choices, and our priorities. I have become uh, quite caught up in media literacy these days because of the ways in which I see uh, how our young people and our families and even those who name the name of Jesus are so consumed with information that literally is stripping away the divine imprint of God, not just in their mind, but also in their own lives, in their body, in their decisions. I, I, I found a study that uh, says that U.S. students are not able to tell online fact from fiction. The study went on to say, and this is very important for all of us who are parents and all of us who are in college or who are ministering and attempting to influence our children. And may I even say some of us who are just trying to navigate these times ourselves in the age of COVID, in the age of misinformation and disinformation, in the age of political manipulation and, and in the age of marketing schemes and, and in the age of a, a virtual world where information is literally being manipulated to get an end or a reaction from us that may have us at odds with the work of God in the world. This study went on to say that most middle school, high school, and college students can't identify fabricated information. Researchers tested 7,800 students, and the students were shown information in social media, news articles, and comments. 82% of middle school students couldn't tell the difference between a sponsored, boosted, paid article, and an actual news story. I want you to understand, loved, beloved, that there are so many things that uh, are coming our way when it comes to information, when it comes to how we discern if our mind is on divine things, or if our mind is literally being dragged into not just human things, but things that have a diabolical intent. I mean, the media literacy uh, 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 toolkit gave us several ways for us to help figure out how can we discern truth from fiction. It, invites us to do a few things, and, and, and it says, uh, authorship, ask yourself who created this message. Second thing, ask yourself about the format, what creative techniques are used to attract your attention. Third thing, interrogate the audience, how might different people understand this message differently than I do? Number four, what lifestyles, values, and points of view are represented in or omitted from this message? Meaning that there are points of views that will not always bubble up to the surface. And how do you in community and with other reputable sources help yourself be able to uncover truth? Why is this message being sent to me? Don't just receive everything that comes your way, but put a filter up. Somebody say amen. Amen. Some of us need to learn to put a filter up. I refuse to let all of these things come my way. Why? Because if all of this gets in, how do I have space for God's will to be at work in my life? Oh, child of God, I want you to know that it is important for us to keep asking ourselves in this moment, how do I feed the part of me that can give me precision 
about God's will, about God's activity, about God's purposes in my life. If I feed my human person, if I feed my carnal man, my 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 flesh will find itself overriding the precision and discernment of the spirit. I've often said this, that what we feed the most will have the most power over you. And if you're like me, I need to make sure that I am feeding my spirit and feeding my mind and feeding my heart and feeding my soul with the things of God, with truth and with accuracy. So when the decision making time comes or when the moment of truth comes, I can make an informed, godly, compassionate decision. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I, I want you to know that uh, not all of our decisions, even when we think we are right, exude compassion. Oh, and I believe that if Jesus, who uh, walked the face of the earth as the holiest of them all, the one who in, mouth, in his mouth, the scripture says, was no guile, no, no, no malice found. If Jesus can be right and still exude compassion, you ought to pat yourself on the chest and say, Lord, help me to be compassionate to myself and my brother, my sister, my neighbor. Oh, yes, under the influence. And so we find this text, the book of Mark, to be a very important part of how we navigate this uh, question about influence. Because we find Jesus uh, literally leading his disciples to what is called Caesarea Philippi. Uh, Caesarea Philippi is uh, one of the outskirt towns of Galilee. It is a place where it is overly populated, not by Jews, but by Gentiles, people who should not be as conscious or aware of the work, the ministry, the life, the history, the prophetic uh, uh, fulfillment, prophetic prophecy, that Jesus was literally bringing to fruition. And it was in a foreign place that Jesus begins to ask them a very serious question of ultimate concern. I want you to know, child of God, that it is often in our journey that God will lead you and I to a foreign place, a place that we do not recognize, a place where we are not surrounded by that which is familiar and demand from us an answer to a question that helps to expose our influences. And I want you to know, child of God, when you find yourself in a foreign place, you ought to buckle down and start to uh, 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 re-engage your disciplines of prayer and study and fasting and spiritual songs. Because in a foreign place, you are going to find a trial. You're going to find a question, an inquiry that will help test us where we are. And it is in this foreign place that I find this compelling question from Jesus. And this question, literally in verse number 29, Jesus asked his disciples, who do the people say that I am? And many of the disciples began to remark that they believe Jesus is Moses or Elijah, the return of of great prophets. Why? Because in their prophetic and their theological understanding, they believed that the liberation of their country from Roman or foreign rule would be preceded by the return of the great prophet Elijah or Moses to set things right. And so even though they were looking and recognizing that Jesus was something different than they'd ever seen before. They did not have a full revelation of what Jesus had showed up to do. And this leads us to our first point on this morning that sometimes our influence will cause us to have a crisis of identity. Come on, come on, somebody put that in the chat. Uh, my influence when I am under the wrong influence it can create a crisis of identity. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Jesus asked them, who do people say that I am? 
And they all begin to rattle off these 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 uh, prophets and these 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 uh, magnanimous figures from their historical record. But then Jesus goes real pointed and says, forget what they are saying. Who do you say that I am? And I want you to know that Peter, he stands up and he says, you are the Messiah, the anointed one. And part of what is so fascinating about this is that Jesus tells Peter to not tell anyone. I want you to wrap your brain around all the things happening in this story, right? You have Jesus leading them into a foreign place, into a place where they are not familiar with their surroundings. You have Jesus giving them a pop quiz while they're surrounded by things they don't recognize. Then you have Jesus inviting them to uh, be, be a, a little bit of a snitch. Somebody say amen. Uh-huh. Tell, tell Jesus, what are other people saying about me? And in their telling of other people's perspectives, Jesus gives them an opportunity to testify about their own revelation. I want you to know, child of God, there are moments in your journey that even though you may be walking with God, you may find yourself in a life experience or moment where you find out that what you think or thought or have been told about Jesus is not the full revelation of what God is up to in your life. A crisis of identity will often create a moment of both dissonance, but also inquiry, where you must begin to wrestle with the moments in your life that cause you and I to question, God, what are you up to? If we are not under the influence of the power of God, we may find ourselves reaching a partial truth. These IV, those who identify Jesus as Moses and Elijah, their identification of Jesus as Moses and Elijah was in line with this understanding that God is going to set things right. But they still could not fully embrace that Jesus was more than a prophet. Jesus was the Messiah, the anointed one. Their partial revelation led to an insufficient conclusion. And how many of you know in our lives sometimes we have blind spots. We have uh, uh, spaces where we have not yet got the fullest picture of what God is doing. And it leads us to an insufficient conclusion. We're wrestling with the sickness in our body. And because we have yet to have this full revelation of what God is doing, we blame ourselves because of our illness. We look at the injustice in the world, and because we don't yet have a full revelation of what God is doing, we lay fault and blame in the wrong places. Or even as we are attempting to navigate truth from fiction and falsehoods from accuracy, we we dive into the clickbait and the literal echo chamber of social media. And without the full picture, we base our lives off of half-truths and conspiracies that are literally causing us to have a crisis of identity, not just about God, but even about ourselves. Oh, child of God, I want you to know that as you find yourself in this foreign land, you are being invited to interrogate how has my arrival in this foreign land caused me or introduced me to a crisis of identity? How have I found myself unclear or not fully in tune with what God is doing in our lives right now? I mean, what would it take for you to pause for a little while and seek some more revelation from God? Before you make that decision, what would it take for you to pause and ask God, what would you have me to do? What would it take for you to seek out counsel that can help give you a fuller picture of what perhaps God may be trying to do 
in this season? What would it look like for you to be honest and say, I know that you are the anointed one and the Messiah in this part of my life, but God, I have yet to fully invite you into this part of my life, and the anointing has yet to reach this hidden place, and thus my view of you is not full. Oh, I want you to know, child of God, that when we don't give God the full reign in our lives, we often find ourselves experiencing a theological crisis of identity. But I want to invite you today to ask yourself, can I get under the influences of the divine and the holy and the spirit of God? So when I find myself in the foreign place, I can ask God for the revelation I need to make the right decision. Oh, here are the questions then. How has your journey to this foreign land introduced a crisis of identity? And is there more revelation you need to capture from, from everything from God so you can understand what God is up to in your life? I want you to know, child of God, even as we go through this season, we must not be content to sit in a crisis of identity. The second thing that the scripture lifts up that I think is important for you and I to think about is sometimes our influence will cause us to be sincerely misguided. Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You ought to tell yourself, Lord, help me not to be sincerely misguided. I mean, verse number 32, the scripture says that Peter took Jesus aside after Jesus uh, tells them that, listen, uh, I, I want you to know that all the things that are getting ready to happen to me, I'm going to be persecuted. I'm going to be tortured. I'm going to be killed and I will rise again. Peter, the one who literally described Jesus as the Messiah, found himself in a split second taking Jesus aside to rebuke Jesus and lecture him about what Jesus just said. Oh, you ought to tell yourself, I must not be sincerely misguided. How many of you know, sometimes in our zeal, we can often be zealous for the wrong thing. I mean, it's important to appreciate that there were a whole group of Jews at the time who were named zealots, which meant that they were the rabble rousers. They were the revolutionaries. They were the individuals who felt by force we are going to overthrow the Roman government. And so many were trying, even around Jesus, to push Jesus into a military, violent rebellion. And I believe that Peter, even though he recognized the messianic function of Jesus, he did not fully understand the pathway or the process by which Jesus was attempting to save not just Israel, but literally the world. And how many of you know that sometimes our partial pictures can often cause us to be sincerely misguided, that we may fall into pride or blindness that makes us think we are qualified to rebuke Jesus? You got to be some kind of Holy Ghost person. You got to be some kind of, 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 of spiritual person to think that you are qualified to rebuke Jesus. I mean, Lord, if I ever get that bad, I pray somebody pulls my coattail and tells me a little bit of something about myself, praise God. Because sometimes uh, life can, 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 can cause us to get a little too puffy. Amen. You know, I, I find myself sitting in rooms and meetings and conversations where ego has run amok, where we are unable to speak uh, in a way that reminds us of our, uh, of our limitations, of our humanity. And how many of you know sometimes it's really important for you and I to remind one another that, you know, your, your, your viewpoint is limited. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. You ought to just tell your neighbor that your viewpoint is limited. Come on, put it in the chat. I know some of you know-it-alls. I, I, I don't know if you've ever been around a know-it-all. Somebody who just thinks they know everything. Somebody who thinks that, 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 that wisdom literally began with them. Lord, I, I want you to know that if your know-it-all-isms uh, uh, get in the way of you being able to hear directly from God, 
And here's something that can challenge your status quo. If your status quo can be challenged by Jesus, Lord, how many of you know you have a problem bigger than a little bit? Amen. Uh, Dr. King, he says it like this, that there is nothing more dangerous than sincere stupidity. Amen. Uh, sometimes we got to pump our brakes and ask ourselves, God, am I being zealous for the wrong thing? Am I one of these individuals who find myself unable to sit with God's voice telling and guiding and admonishing us in a direction that may feel opposite to everything we know to believe is true? Woo! I want you to know it's, it's, it's quite a dilemma in this country. When we are as followers of Jesus, as Christ followers, as Christians, as the church are so wedded to war and so wedded to violence, so wedded to, 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 to the deaths of others without much regard for their suffering. I want you to know, child of God, that sometimes we must be honest that our influences can cause us to be sincerely Misguided in your relationship, sometimes the advice you're getting may cause you to be sincerely misguided. Sometimes the way that you are taking care of your health can cause you to be sincerely misguided. Sometimes if all you are receiving uh, as information are tidbits on social media or continually, continuously listening to your favorite pundit or your favorite news channel and you're not able to read more widely or conversate with folks who have different opinions. How many of you know sometimes we can become sincerely misguided and get to a place that when Jesus is trying to promote and proclaim the will of God, we think it is our place to correct the divine. Lord, I want you to know Jesus told Peter, oh, get thee behind me. He didn't call him Peter. He said Satan. Oh, and I'm here to tell you, some of us better check the devil that's trying to sneak up in our heart and sneak up in our mind and sneak up in our relationships and sneak up in this, this political climate and sneak up in the media. The devil is trying to deceive some of us. When wisdom is, as the scripture says, crying out in the street trying to lead us to a path of life. Oh, but you ought to tell someone, I will not be lied to. I will not be misguided. I am going to train my ears to hear the voice of God. And may my response to God be, Lord, whatever you have to say, I will say yes, Lord. Who do I have anybody in the house that remembers what it's like to say yes to the Lord? Do I have anybody in the house that remembers what it's like to say, have thine own way in me? Do I have anybody that remembers what it's like to say, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done in me? Lord, help me to say yes. And then that leads me then to the third thing, child of God, that you and I, as the scripture says, must be a Jesus follower. Oh, come on, somebody holler, I must follow Jesus. You know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are literally being influenced by divine things. So, to the extent that you can become a follower of Jesus. So, Jesus said it like this in the text. Uh, if you want to become my followers, uh, Jesus, listen, talking to the disciples uh, who have been hanging out with him for all these many years. Uh, Jesus did not take for granted that they were his followers. Uh, Jesus told them, if you want to become my followers. Uh, I want you to know, child of God, some of us need to ask ourselves that question uh, from time to time. Am I becoming a follower of Jesus or am I a follower of the United States Constitution? Am I a follower of the Democratic Party platform? Am I a follower of the Republican Party platform? Am I a follower of my racial or ethnic or gender?
gender or sexual or class or 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 religious or or nationality uh, propaganda. I want you to know all of these things have their place. But when Jesus calls you by name, somebody better say, here I am, Lord. Send me. Jesus said it like this. If you want to become my follower, I don't want to just hear you talking with your mouth. But I want to see what does your life produce in order to be my follower. I love it how Augustine, St. Augustine, a North African church father, he says it like this. That if we are to become followers of Jesus, then we must pick up our crosses and follow him. But child of God, we are not called to become more burdened by our own crosses than by the cross of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. I like Augustine because he sets the record straight. Yes, you must deny yourself, meaning yes, you must ask yourself, oh, what are the things that I got to check in order for me to become a follower of Jesus? You must ask yourself, how does does my life itself become a cruciform, a, 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 a literal reflection of Christ in me and Christ's work on the cross in my life? Jesus is saying, uh-huh, deny yourself, but listen, when you take up your cross, your cross must always reflect Jesus' work in you. Jesus is saying, uh, your suffering need not have an an endless uh, or insig or, or 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 clueless outcome. Uh, your suffering need not be masochistic in nature. Uh, your suffering and trial are not without purpose. Uh, but listen, literally, what God helps affect in us uh, is what God will command from us. Uh, if God calls you to this trial, uh, as God has called us. Through this season, every generation has to answer the call. We are being called through COVID. We are being called through Christian nationalism. We are being called through a season of literal mental illness, depression, and isolation. We as the church are literally being tried in the fire of fragmentation, of, of, the, of, 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 of division, and malice and God is asking some of us while we're in this trial will you still follow me will you still say yes to me will you still deny yourself I know you were right Lord I'm preaching to myself I know you felt like you had the right point or the right question but will you deny yourself and say God not my will but yours be done. I know that you've taken up a cross and you're going through it, but while you're carrying this cross, will you allow the Spirit of God to shape the cross in a way in your life that it literally produces Jesus, his image and his manifestation in our lives. Yes, child of God, we are under some influences, but I want you to ask yourself, how can I be under the influence? of the Holy One, of the Anointed One of the one who saved me, of the one who healed me, of the one who delivered me. How can I be under that influence? How can I commit myself to feed that part of me that makes the influences of God more predominant in my life? How can I feed my soul in a way that when trouble comes, there ain't no room for for doubt or anxiety. There ain't nothing but praise on my lips. There ain't nothing but inquiry grounded in faith on my lips. Even if I got to moan and groan and cry and mourn, how can I tell myself that God bottles up my tears? We preached about that a couple weeks ago. How can I tell myself that God shows up with me in the middle of my crying at night? How can I remind myself that though trials come, Oh, that God is still present with us. Yes, child of God.
God. I want you to know. I want you to know. I want you to know. We must be under the influences of God. And if we can be under God's influence, how many of you know that we're going to make it through? We're going to make it through this trial in this season. Come on, tell somebody I will make it through because I'm under the influences of God. Come on, tell your neighbor in the chat, you will make it through. Because you're under the influences of God. Uh huh. Testify to yourself. Tell your trouble. Tell your trial. Tell your struggle. I will be under the influences of God. Uh, put Cardi B away for a week. Uh huh. Put, 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 put Lil Wayne away for a week. And why don't you pull out some of these songs of old Zion? I've been listening to the Hawkins all week long. A song said that God will always open doors. You can ride on through the storm and the rain because God will always open a door. I've been humming that all week. Why? Because I found myself under some wrong influences. And I had to remind myself that I will not be shaped by the wickedness of this world. But I will remind myself that God will always always deliver victory, strength, and power to his people. And it is that message. It is that truth. It is that discipline that I want to commission to us today. Oh, child of God, my hope and prayer for us is that we will be under the right influences. That we will Love the truth and dare ourselves to be influenced by it. That we will seek out the truth and dare ourselves to eschew falsehoods. That we will seek out and embrace the truth and dare the devil himself to come and try to snatch it from our hearts. Oh, just like Jesus told Peter, get thee behind me your mind is not on divine things but they're on human things God is telling some of us today you're under the wrong influences so tell that devil get behind me this week because I must be under the influence of God's spirit oh God in the name of Jesus we want you, Lord. We need you, Lord, to position us so we are under the influences of your power, of your strength, of your anointing. It is not an embellishment, oh God, to acknowledge that we are enduring a season of great tumult, a time where even though wisdom cries out in the streets, so does foolishness, so does mendacity, so does deception and falsehood. And God, it is at times hard to be reminded to have our ears trained towards the wisdom. The wisdom and the truth that reminds us that our lives are in your hands. That remind us that healing is within our grasp. That reminds us, oh God, that trouble don't last always. I pray God that you will help us to be under the influence of the divine. Your influence your plans, your practices, your ways, your truths. Bless your people today. May their lives be fully immersed by the influence of the Spirit. And we will acknowledge you as we make this journey. We will recognize your power and work among us. Save us, Lord. If you need to be saved today, I hear God saying, I want to influence you in a way that carries into eternity. 
If you're like Peter and you're already literally a follower of Jesus, I hear God saying you may be under some either misguided, sincere, sincere, mis, uh, you may be under a, a, a time of sincerely misguidedness. And God is saying, I want to pull you into a place of full revelation. Come on, ask God, Lord, give me a fuller picture of what's going on. Or you may just need to acknowledge, God, I'm not following you well in this part of my life. God, whatever it is, give us what we need. And we'll say, thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody say, thank you, Lord. We'll say, thank you, Lord. We'll acknowledge you. Will it give you the praise? We'll seek your face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.